ahead and clap. Go ahead and clap. Every time I stand up here, I always feel like I'm the wet blanket from uh, praise and worship team. People go from singing, clapping, smiling to potentially sleeping. <laughs> so I will keep my remarks short, but greet someone. My name is James Beatty, one of the reverends and elders here at the church. Uh, it's good to see your smiling faces. The song says, uh, think about it. And so it calls to mind that we have to be conscious of what we think about throughout our day. Because what drives our thoughts, or what's present in our thoughts, will drive our day. And so I want you to focus on the things of God. My sister wrote me a note this morning and said, it is so important how you start your day because it sets the tone for today. So I challenge you, and I am so proud of you that you've decided to start your day today in service. In service to the Almighty God who's looking after you and wants nothing but the best for you. Think about that. Think about that. So if there's anything negative or drawing you back, it's probably not what God wants for you. So I ask that as we're about to go into praise and worship, stand with me as I read this one verse from Psalms 55, verse 22. It says, cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. And guess who the righteous is? It's you. It's you. It's you. It's you. It's you. God will never let you fall. Let's worship the Lord.
today my people it's not about how great our lives are and then we praise Jesus it's about getting through the journey with him right by our side letting him bring peace letting him bring joy in the chaos allowing him in allowing him to give all that he is in the midst of it all Woo! I feel that today do you feel that today anybody feeling that See. All right, Lane, you sing it with me now. Here we go. Here we go. Sing with your mama. And I've still got joy in chaos. I've got peace that makes no sense. So I won't be going under. Save me. 
So, you know, things are always changing. Things are always moving. Seasons are changing. We change with the seasons like Thursday, suddenly the heat was turned off, right? And even in our bodies, even if I stand perfectly still, my body is still moving. Our emotions change and shift. Hopefully we can find a place where we're mostly even. Our lives change and shift, but there is one thing, there is one thing that never changes, and that's God's love for us. That's God's truth for us. That's God's peace and joy for us, and his unending chasing after us for us to find him, to come to him. So wherever you find yourself today, if you feel like you're shifting and, and, and changing and, and not settled, God is settled. It is settled that God loves us. There is no question about it. No question whatsoever. God loves us. He loves you. So I just want to invite you to come to the altar. If you would like somebody to pray for you or just raise your hand where you are and one of us will come and find you.
And your glory is so beautiful I fall unto my knees in awe And the heartbeat of my life Is to worship in your life Cause your glory is so beautiful Your glory is so beautiful And my life is yours My life is yours My hope is in you only And my heart Cause your glory is so beautiful I fall unto my knees in awe And the heartbeat of my life Is to worship in your life Cause your glory is so beautiful
so good. Are, are, God is so good. Okay. We're going to continue our worship, but I want to ask Dana to come up. We're talking about seasons. We're talking about God being a solid rock. Yes? So Dana's going to share just a little bit about that. So um, I've never been good at, like, fall preparation for, like, the spring for next year, like pruning and, you know, clean up. We just, we have a big yard. It's a lot of work. I've never been good at it. But yesterday we were home and I... It was a beautiful day. I'm like, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. And so we spent several hours outside pruning. And as I'm pruning and cutting things back and digging things and moving things, I just felt God impress on my heart that sometimes we enter into seasons or others around us may enter into seasons of dormancy, right? Where it looks like they're cutting back, they're dying. They're not, they're not alive anymore. But just because we go dormant and have to cut some things back, we have to prune, doesn't mean we're dead. Doesn't mean there's still not something living there. And so we're in that season of pruning and dormancy. Allow God to, to nourish you in that soil. And don't, don't be so quick to cast judgment on others who may be dormant too. Because you don't know their lives, you don't know what they're going through. Because when that season of spring comes and life bursts forth better than it was before because it got pruned. So I just want to encourage you today that if you're in that season or maybe you're coming into that season, maybe you're coming out of that season, just hang on. Hang on to Jesus. Hang on to his love. He is good. He is good.
So James and I had a bet that I wouldn't come up here, and here I am. I can't help myself. <laughs> James won. <laughs> but here's why. Mechtild of Magdeburg, great name, 15th century mystic, says this. God has enough of all good things except one. Are you ready? Of communion with humans, God can never have enough. Of communion with humans. Could it be that God invites us to a daily devotional, not because God wants us to be better, but because God goes, I want more of you. I want to be with you. Could it be that in these moments as we come together, as a community right here, right now, that God is going, I'm in the midst of you, not so that we can be like these holy great people, but so that God says, because I want to be with you. I can't get enough of you. I adore you. So can we stand together and can we scream and sing this song, oh, how he loves us. Oh, my Lord, can we open up our arms this morning and can we receive it that nobody loves us like God loves us. Nobody adores us like God adores us. Nobody wants to be with us as much as God wants to be with us. No human can fill up what only God can fill up within us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us this morning. Oh, how God loves us so much. Just open up our hearts this morning and receive this love that God has for us. Thank you, Jesus. Heaven meets earth like an unforeseen kiss.
lost my shoes, guys. I had to dance just a little bit. This is holy, holy, holy ground. Why? Because God is here with us and we are here with God in a holy conversation. Makes it holy ground. God is holy. We are holy with God. Amen. This is so sweet. Like we never quite know like how to move from this space. So let's just float here just a little bit. About 10 more seconds. God, you are so amazing, so holy, so sweet. And I just pray that all of your children here, all of your people, trust you, believe you, rest with you, feel you in this moment. We thank you, Lord, that in this simple time of praise and worship, that you have spoken to someone to ease their pain, to comfort them, to encourage them, to reassure them, to inspire them and motivate them. Lord, you are more than enough in everything that we need. Our very lives flow from you. You are in our breath. You are our heartbeat. We thank you, Lord. In you there is life. We cling to that life. And we bask in the light of your glory. want to welcome you and say thank you for being here today. I pray that you continue to just get everything that you need from God. Because he'll just keep pouring out. He's not going to run out. He's not going to run out. Thank you for joining us at home. You are a part of our community too. And we are happy that you are worshiping with us. So we're going to transition into worshiping with our giving. We're going to have our servers come forward. Tony and Dave, both so faithful, godly men. Give them a hand. Great examples of how God can use you wherever you are. So Lord, we just thank you that as we get ready to give, I want you to think about all the ways God has blessed you in this house. I want, to, I want you to think about all the relationships you've been able to um, begin and nurture and continue in this place. I want you to think about all the ways you've been able to go out to the community because of what you've learned in this place and touch somebody in your sphere of influence because of this place. And so if you believe in what we are doing here, we invite you to join with us financially so we can continue doing what we do. And we actually believe that we do it well. We were talking earlier this morning uh, as elders that this is a place of community. It is a circle that continues to grow. And you are a part of that. You are the most important part of that. So we just thank you, Lord. Oh, by the way, there's a whole lot of ways you can give. They're all on the screen. <laughs> oh, Jesus, thank you. So, Lord, as we uh, just come to you with our giving, Lord, we thank you that people will give joyously and liberally. 
We thank you, Lord, that you take that giving and you multiply it and you direct us, Lord, in how to use it. We thank you for finances in this place. We thank you for abundance in this place because in your kingdom there is no lack. So we thank you, Lord God, that as we continue to, to follow you, you continue to multiply it back to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. as they are passing the basket even if you know even if you give online or you mail in a check when you see that basket going past say a prayer over that basket okay say a prayer for the money that is coming in and don't look at that basket and go oh nobody's giving people are giving if you have some coins in your pocket though go ahead and throw them in the basket it's okay I'm on a roll today. Okay. <laughs> Amen. Thank you for Joni and Brit. Oh my God, Brigitte. I'm about to call okay. Brittany. I go by lots of things. I know Brigitte and for Chloe. Thank you for your your service and for ushering us in so beautifully to the Lord's throne. Now we're going to invite our children to go to Kingdom Kids. Are you guys ready? Who do we have? Oh, we have Christine today. And do we have Rashida today or just Christine today? Come on, guys. And as they go, Lord, we just thank you that you bless them to learn the word on their level. We thank you for their hearts. We thank you, Lord God, that they are eager and ready to absorb everything that you want to give to them today. In Jesus' name, amen. As they go wave, wave at somebody, say hello, hello. You guys aren't waving, Let's wave, there you go. Wave at somebody over here. Hi, hi family online. And now, oh, okay. <laughs> stuff going on here and now we are on part three of our giving series have you guys enjoyed it so far have you learned some things I learned some things I learned some things about God's abundant heart I learned about you know one of the things we talked about this morning is one of the things we've seen and been able to it, to hear from you is the value that you place on being at Cornerstone your stories of coming in feeling alone and yet being embraced right and that giving out of our hearts and how that transfers into our finances and that God is not a a, um, a mean God who who is going to punish you if you don't give or you don't give like the whole 10 percent right we believe in that 10%, but we, but we believe more that God meets you where you are. And he doesn't punish you. He doesn't begrudge your giving. So with that, I'm going to bring up the Reverend Pastor James Beatty to finish out the series today. Give him a hand as he comes. Good morning, everyone. Oh, thank you, praise and worship team, and all those who have gone before me today. It's always a pleasure to be here with you uh, and the opportunity to stand in front of you. My partner in crime is on standby. Uh, as I try to close out this short mini-series today. Uh, as I said, my name is James Beatty. For those of you that don't know me, I'm still getting accustomed to being called Reverend and all that stuff, because I've been James all my life, so, uh, and Dad, uh, which 
is a band of, of honor, a badge of honor that I, I, I carry. Before jumping into my words here today, I just want to do a check because Matt and I meet and we talk about the sermons we give. And we talk about it in terms of effectiveness, right? Effectiveness in terms of do we think people heard what we wanted them to hear? Did they understand it? What do we need to clean up, right? <laughs> so before I go further, what do you remember so far about this series? Just raise your hand, yell out. Being a joyful giver. Appreciating what the church has done for you. She stole it from me. The community is a blessing to all of us. The community is a blessing to all of us. Knowing what we give and receive. Knowing what we give and receive. Anyone else? Belonging. Belonging. Right? How we doing, Matt? Is that I, I think we're on, we're pretty much on course then, right? And so for those who are, were not here all three weeks, we invite you to listen to the tapings online. You can do it on YouTube. You can do it on our website uh, because we think it is valuable in terms of understanding what does it mean organizationally to move from a center set church, I'm sorry, to move to a center set, set church from a bounded set. That one? Mm. There we go. Right? So, the series is meant to be three weeks, and it was originally labeled a three week sermon on giving. And he's like, ah, oh, that's going to sound really bad. People are going to think we're beating up on them about, hey, you just need to give more, right? I don't know if you've been around more than two weeks, but you probably, if you've been around a little bit in your church life, you've, you've gone through that experience, and we didn't want to mimic that. We wanted people to get a holistic understanding of how these pieces come together so that we experience and understand the life we are experiencing under the banner of what we today call church. Right? These pieces come together. And we want you to understand that we're, we're, we're trying to live this life of love and of an encouragement and not of lording over you. It requires a level of maturity and of engagement that you may not have experienced in the past. Right? So if you only are accustomed to giving when someone gets up and yells at you and holds service for 10 or 15 minutes until you give, it's not going to happen here. But we need you to understand why we need you to give. Right? So that is the intent of the series, is to understand when you shift organizationally from bounded set, where someone is giving you almost like at work an annual review, to one of, hey, we love you, do what you think is right. That has consequences. That has consequences. And so we want you to know what those consequences are as we reimagine what does it mean to be community and center set, right? So that's some of the things that we wanted to, uh, to cover. And so we broke the series down into reimagining gathering, reimagining giving, and now, since the wonderful, intelligent, brilliant Joni gave us the word go, reimagining going in our outreach. And that's where we are today in terms of the third and final piece of this mini-series. But we can always talk about it where after service? In the gathering room, where we have discussions about the service and any other topic that, that relates to you. 
And for those of you online, feel free to put things in the chat box and we'll, we'll get back to you in, at, at a later moment. So I just want to do a, a quick review of the past uh, two weeks. So recap. So reimagining gathering, right? We gave the biblical examples and reflected on a few things. One, we, we talked about how we reflect God more when we join together versus when we can do things independently, right? So I looked at 1 Corinthians, I think 13 verse 4, and it talks about God, right? It talks about love, and we, we understand from going to Bible uh, school that God is what? Love. And so in, in 1 Corinthians 13, starting at verse 4, it says, Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongdoing. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes always perseveres love never fails but have you ever asked yourself can you do that without someone else can you do any of those things without being in the presence of someone else I want you to imagine if you measure yourself in your journey toward God along each and every one of those parameters. And how do you do that? We all know we get up in the morning and for those of us who are going into the office for our jobs, we get on the highway and we're probably ticked off before we get to work. <laughs> Somebody has pushed our button. Right? So then how are we measuring ourselves? Because we were good when we were in the house by ourselves. We were good when we were making our coffee. We were good when you were making your lunch for the day. You were good. You were good when you got in the car. And something happened. What? People. All of those people. See, we even named out the highways. We know where it happens. We know how it happens. And if you leave the house at the same time, you know what color that car is. <laughs> People. So how do we show that we are moving toward the love and character of God without people and engaging them? Right? So that's so I want you to also think about this a little bit differently when you come to church next time. When that brother or sister kind of ticks you off. Say, oh, my God test. This is my God test. Because we learn how God is because we engage one another. Right? You've been keeping a record of all the people in church that did you wrong. First Corinthians said, mm -mm, you don't do that. You've been boasting about your blessings for the last three years. First Corinthians says, you don't do that. But how do you do it? How do you know you've succeeded? You come and you gather with people. The second part of the gathering is something unique happens when we join together that cannot happen independently. Second part of that. Something unique, more powerful than when I do what I do by myself. When I come and I join you. Pastor Tracy talks about this all the time that we learn more about God through watching nature than we ever cared to slow down and observe. Right? We learn more about God through watching nature 
than we could ever learn just by reading. Because we can craft all kinds of things in our mind. About, oh yeah, but if you look at this way, that way. Well, let me give you an example. I heard this story about this, um, this breed of horse called the Belgian breed horse. Have you ever heard of it? Yep. You heard of it? Sure right? Do, it's a what? Draft horse. It's a draft horse. It's very big and majestic. It's bigger, slightly bigger than a Clydesdale. And when you see it, it just looks like he's on steroids. <laughs> Big, broad chest, strong. But in this horse, they're known, as she said, as a draft horse. And individually, by itself, it can tow 8,000 pounds by itself. One of them. The interesting part, you would think, if you put two of them together, they would pull what? 16,000. Everybody passed that part of math. <laughs> but what they found out by observing these horses that were used in World War II as a part of moving equipment from one part of, the, of Europe to the other is that when you yoke two together, you didn't get 16,000 pounds. You got closer to 22,000 pounds. So we magnify one another. And then what they found is if they keep these two Belgium horses together and they learn to live life together, they move from being able to move 22,000 pounds to 32,000 simply by understanding one another. Do you get that? So is this God who can do that with a draft horse? What can he do with you? What can he do with you? We miss sometimes our points of why we come together. All right, so that's our takeaways that we, despite, you know, we love the people who join us online and we, we, we love you and we try to provide everything we can to you in terms of the knowledge of what we are via media. But there's something unique when I get to know you as a person. When I understand your strengths, your weaknesses, how to feel you, how to love you in the way that you need to be loved. That's why we come together. Then we moved into uh, the second week, which was about giving. Again, the biblical case, uh, the functional need. And we had, I thought, this lovely discussion about what are the things that you've given and that you've received? What are the things you've given and that you receive? Because I think at times we forget what we receive what we receive. I think all of society has forgotten what it receives from the church. All of society. What, what basis is there for love if it wasn't for the church? What basis is there for generosity if not for the church? What basis for caring for one another is there Right? So we, we, at times we, I think, come against the structure and the negatives of church and of religion without understanding what we have received. And that each and every one of you gives something, whether you understand it or not. Sometimes it's just your presence. It's your smile. It's your gentleness that others have come here to receive. We give and we receive. The other functional need is we all understand that it's 2022, about to be 2023, and we started to project what if there was no air conditioner or no heat or light or on and on and on or no one that would receive our call at 2 o'clock in the morning. I think Matt said he would take the call at 5 a.m. Uh, I start taking calls maybe about 10 maybe right 
We, we had an experience this past week, uh, individual, isolated, that just needed somebody to do community with them. How do you do that if you don't have the resources in terms of people to go out? And so that is kind of the functional need to have this house, to have the utilities, to have the comfort that you as an individual will require. That is the structures that we put in. But we said that we're not going to do the old way. We're not going to guilt trip you. We're not going to put fear on you. We're not going to manipulate you. There's no shame. There's no resentment. There's no false promises. The whole goal of this series is just to teach. It's just to be, make you aware. I don't think if you go online, let's say YouTube, you can find a page that eventually does not bash giving to the church. That has consequences. That when you are in need, will it be there? When you are hurting, will it be there? When all the stories that were shared about, and I, I was so proud of this moment, and my wife and I talked about this later, about people being willing to share the low points of their life that they experience while being a member here that the church stepped up and helped. What was I most proud of? Not that the church helped, but that we've created an environment where you don't have to be the strongest in the room. We've created a situation where you can say, I am open and I am weak. Can you help me? And we say, yes. There's no shame here. There's no big eyes and little U's here. That's what we're trying to create. That's why we are moving away from those things and moving to, and we didn't get a chance to go into this concept last week, and that is Harambe. It is about community. It is about we together, pull together to solve our problems. We together, pull together to create our community. And what do we want our community to be? Right? So, that's what we're moving toward and we are oh i messed up the font again we're valuing the church and what it, its services and responding cheerfully right so that's what we've covered so far and the last part is about how do we go how do we do outreach based on this construction of who we are. Because once we understand who we are, we also understand who wants what we have. Who wants what we have? Who wants an existence without shame? Who wants an existence where people value you for who you are and allowing you to move toward God? I do. Who values, and you hear it all the time. After you, hopefully, my main goal after today is you will see it in the streets as you go. That you will understand the difference between how you may have approached how people view the church versus what they would do in a center set environment. So I wanna put up a couple of videos and then I wanna contrast that with Acts 8. So videos, one. Have you ever thought about the Lord Jesus? I mean, it's really awesome that he created the heavens and the earth and, uh, you know, trees and... Have you ever read Genesis? No. Um, man, it's... Yeah, it really talks about the sky and everything out in the heavens and... It's, 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 it's amazing. Let's get down to business. Let's just cut it. Let's just cut it. Uh, 
Yeah, because I want to explain. So <sighs> At times, this video gets kind of cringeworthy, but we'll share the li link with you. It's an old style way of how do you witness in the street. And it's really focused on us and what we want you to know. Right? It's all on us and what I know that now I'm going to enlighten you. Right? This video was put out not long ago, it was a while ago, 2016, but this isn't foreign to what you still see in terms of witnessing even right now. And I wanted to look at a comical way of how these engagements may turn out. Go ahead with the second video. Excuse me, sir. <clears throat> Excuse me. Do you have time to talk about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Hey, don't run from the Lord. Where are you going? <laughs> right? Have you, have you ever seen this? Have you ever been that person? I have. I have. I'm like, oh my God, what do I have pointed on my face? Stop. Stop. Mm. If that's how you witness today and it's effective, I would say, do your thing. Do your thing. Unfortunately for most of us, if we try those methods, it's going to end up like the second video. And everywhere you go, people are going to go, there's that guy. There's that woman. There's that person. Please stay away from them if you don't want a crazy conversation. How is that different than in a centered set church? Right, because all of these are about just the differences in the two. And the reason going out is important is because many hands make light. So I'll, re I'll relate it to giving in this way. It's easier when it's a lot of us to support the structure of this building and the services that we all need. And business is just called economies of scale, right? I, I realize I'm kind of veering from what you would kind of hear in church, but this is just practical information. Are you okay with that? Right? So the spiritual part is people want from God what you have already accessed and have tapped into. The standard or the living life part of that is you need people that also want the same thing to come and join you that then you can support that, right? So we go out and we touch people in a way, not coercively, but they already want this. They already want a relationship with God. The problem is the relationship that has been promoted about God because we are faulty, that message, the way we present it, is also faulty. Does that make sense? I, I can only give you a level of perfection that I contain. And if you look at me as an individual, you know that level of perfection is pretty low. Right? That's just a reality. God, perfect. My containment of perfection, low. So anytime I go out to you, about perfection, about a relationship with God, the reality of that is low. So my goal is to get you pointed in the direction of all perfection. Is that making any sense? Do I need to slow it down? It makes sense, all right? So what is the example of that? I'll go to Acts 8. In Acts 8, I, I won't read it because it's kind of long, but I want to give you the high points of it. Two stories about Philip are in Acts 8. One is about Philip uh, evangelizing to the Samaritans. That's, that name Samaritans should be interesting to you. And why, how is Philip able to witness to them? 
Remember, the Samaritans are the, are the Jews that none of the other Jews will engage. But somehow Philip is out there engaging the Samaritans. And the other interesting part about it, it is that they received him with joy and gladness. How? Because Philip taught the message of Jesus Christ only. Not what the Pharisees added on. Not what you will have to worship in Jerusalem on. Not how and when you worship added on. Not what you put on your body added on. He taught Jesus as the Messiah. And they received it with gladness and joy. The second part of that is Philip was then introduced to an Ethiopian eunuch who was high. He was over all the treasury in Ethiopia. Interesting for two reasons. Ethiopia was one of the most wealthy countries on the planet at that time. And here you have the person that's over all the treasury seeking the Messiah that Philip now walks up to. I won't go into all the dynamics of how that culturally of a person of low repute talks to a person that is of that high of esteem. Let's skip all that for today, okay? We're just going to say he was sitting there reading the Bible because he had taken a trip to Jerusalem because that was his duty. But even after performing his duty, he's now reading the word. And Philip walks up to him and said, do you understand what you are reading? And the eunuch says, how can I, unless I have a guide? This gives Philip the opening to now teach and communicate and talk. They went along, the, the scripture says, and it was so convincing and satisfied so many of the eunuch's needs that he went and said, hey, I hear about this baptism. Here is water. What prevents us? Who's driving this conversation? The eunuch. Do when we go out and we are engaging people, have you ever heard their needs religiously? Have you first understood what they are seeking from God? Or did you come in with your script? Did you come in with your script? Think about Jesus when he first met the woman at the well. Did he come in with a script? Time and time again, if we are truly talking about, I am a believer and I want to share the good news of Jesus Christ with each and every one of you, First, I have to understand what is your need? Because where you come from is different from where I come from. What your needs are from God and from Jesus Christ is different than mine. What I am always very impressed about in this community is the diversity of life experiences from within the community. What does that do? It means we all have a different journey if I'm willing to listen. I can't testify to you about how God delivers from drugs, but I know someone that does and I can connect you with them. Does that diminish me and my witness? No. But I can engage you about the things of my life. How do you stay married for 28 years? I can talk to you about that. How do you have three boys and then have a young girl that breaks your heart? <laughs> I can talk to you about that. In a good way. She made me so emotional. She just thought, I had no, all this crying, y'all see? I, no. Before her, there were no tears. There were no tears. I can talk to you about that. That's my witness. What is yours? I want to go back to the concept, uh, Harami, Harambi, 
that we, Hamram Bay, that we talked about in the giving section before. The concept is an East African, East African concept and tradition. It is about we, the community, pull together. Right? We talked about that financially. But it's also what are the overall needs of you? What are the overall needs of your neighbor? What are the needs of your office environment? How are you pulling together to make your environment the environment? This is the challenge that I give to you today. How are you gonna make this environment the environment? And I say that because you have a unique challenge in the world today. Your challenge is this. Church already has an established brand. And if you like traditional church, you will embrace it. But we're seeing year after year after year, fewer and fewer people are embracing the traditional mode of church. That doesn't mean people don't need God. Their question, do they need church? These are very different things, very different. So what I'm asking and I challenge to you today, is can you be Philip? Can you hear the needs of the community? Do you understand how they are seeking God in a way that may be different than how you grew up? Are you willing to support getting all of that together through your knowledge and through your resources so that people can have what they are already seeking? And that is a relationship with the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Meditate on that for a moment. Think about all the people you know, at least I have, and I was all really embarrassed about how many people I know that say, yeah, I should go to church more. And somehow that doesn't connect to how they join the community that I'm a part of. Think about that. So these are the pieces when people, and we'll close here, as people talk about what is the difference between a centered set church organization versus a bounded set. I hope I've given you the parameters of what's included, but what's different. Included in all of them is gathering, but we gather for different reasons, not because of shame, because you receive something. Included in all of them is giving. The justification is just different. It is, we're not going to check tax returns and look at that. It's like, God, we trust that you are mature enough with God that God will lead you to what you can give. Because there's no need in you giving to us today and getting an eviction notice tomorrow. No. That would be irresponsible of us. We're clear on that. And then the last piece. We go and we share the news, not because it is what we are intelligent about and we have to educate others. It is we are intelligent and we are understanding the needs of others that already have a desire for God. We listen first. We community with one another first, and then we go forward. Amen? You get anything from it? All right. I think I watched that one video like three times this morning. Don't run from the Lord. <laughs> it just got, got me every time. <laughs> Um, a few announcements to close out this morning. Our food pantry is open um, out through the great room. If you have a need or if somebody you know has a need for some food, please take, take us up on that resource. It's beautiful ministry that we have here. Um, another thing um, that I love so much about this community, again, is, is seeing the needs that are present within our community. So the food pantry, for example. Um, the, and then we have felt strongly a need to have a conference 
for our LGBTQIA plus community and supportive allies to come to be a part of a time of blessing, a time of healing, a time of coming together of support and love. And that's gonna be October, Saturday, October 22nd, right here at Cornerstone. Got some amazing speakers lined up, some amazing worship lined up. It's gonna be a wonderful, wonderful day. And I know, I know there were some hard hits this week in Westchester for this community. And we stand with you. We stand with you and support you. And I think this is another beautiful need and opportunity for us to show the community you are loved. So we invite you to come to that and register for that. Um, we also have Harvest Bingo coming up. You guys have to come out because Pastor Tracy cannot win everything, okay? So that is gonna be Saturday, October 29th over in the conference room, two to 5 p.m. I think it's a dollar per game. Oh, 25 cents per game or a dollar for five cards. Yes, that's what it is. Lots of steel. Yeah, so it's a lot of fun, amazing prizes. So please come out for that. And we also have a bowling fundraiser coming up on Saturday, November 5th at Downingtown Bowling Palace. It's another beautiful community event together. So we invite you out to all these things. And we also invite you to just check our website, check our social media pages. We keep everything updated. And there's a Christmas choir <laughs> coming up. Um, Joni does have a sign up. We're going to send an online sign up this week. Um, if you're interested in being a part of the Christmas choir, we haven't done one in a while. It's really, really fun. So we encourage you to sign up for that. All right. I think that's it. <laughs> Thank you, Dana. Please stand. Stand with me for the benediction. So I ask you to do one thing as we continue to create community. Shake at least three other people's hand before you leave. I know it sounds like rules, doesn't it? <laughs> I know. But I want you to get to know each other. I have the great opportunity to meet a lot of you, but I don't know if you all meet each other. And so I want to help facilitate that, right? So, but bow your heads with me. Dear God, we thank you for today. We thank you for the word that has gone forward. And we thank you for the community that we are building. We ask that as we continue to go throughout this week that your word will continue to saturate our hearts. Give us an understanding of how to meet the needs of the community around us and how to be that light that you have designed us to be. And I pray that the grace and peace of God go with each and every one gathered here today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Have a blessed week. <laughs>